So I'm getting ready to shoot a video, as one does, and I'm going through my uh, my my pile of uh, donor SP boards because um, I'm doing something that may or may not involve an SP, and uh, I come across this board, and of course, instead of doing the video I plan to do, let's see if we can't fix this thing instead. So I. Did a stream a while back. I bought a bunch of parts, Game Boys, and I ended up fixing almost none of them. Uh, this is one of them. I got... I made some progress, but it's still not working properly. If I plug this in, it's actually really difficult to plug that in because the bale is broken. I tried transplanting a non-broken bale onto this and then immediately broke the second bale. So, not off to a good start. But if I jam that in there and just try and boot this thing. We get that. On any display, it does not matter. Every single display, uh, backlight kit, OEM, it's just garbled. If I plug a speaker in, I can hear that it is actually booting, uh, albeit it looks like it's booting in Game Boy Color mode, regardless of what's plugged in, but that is a problem for a different time. Um, I am going to get this get this off and see if we can't fix that. Uh, I'm going to hope for the best that this tape will insulate all of these buttons. Though there's definitely a better material to use for heat shielding. And I'm going to swap in this part, which I'm fairly certain is the correct part. I know it's a 34 pin. FFC, but instead of having a slide out bail, it has a uh, swing down top bail. But I don't, the bag they're in is unlabeled. So I don't know if these are top connect or bottom connect. I'm fairly certain they are um, top connect because I would have bought these for an SP. So hopefully it's the right part. Let's find out. I'm going to pull this old one off with uh, hot air. Let's see what happens. If this works, then hell, maybe I'll use this SP. Except that it still needs uh, shoulder buttons and a charge port. And it might still have other stuff wrong with it. But we'll try it anyway. Come on. These things are not meant to be removed with hot air. They completely disintegrate if you try. So, you know, just an FYI. But that's all we need. This piece of garbage, gone. Now if we're lucky, all of those pins are nice and intact. And indeed, they are. So that's what goes down next. I'm gonna remove this stuff though. Ah, uh, I boiled the buttons. And I ruined, ruined one of them. Probably ruined that other one too. That's okay. They're replaceable. I'm gonna clean some of that flux up though. I'll be able to clean this flux up once I got the part on. 
So I'm going to use a different kind of flux. And because I got flux in that button, I'm not too worried about what happens to it. Alright. Let's try that again. Still a little bit of flux on this. Let's see what happens. Come on. I'll just put a big solder ball on there. There we go. Not quite lined up, but once I do get it lined up. There. Can use a little bit of no clean. Oh, this is going horribly. But screw it, let's just get the whole thing. I'm having a heck of a hard time with this. I wonder how it'll look if I hit it with the uh, desolder and breed. Soak up all the extra. Probably should have done that in the first place before even trying to put the part on. That way I could have got it set down flat. But here we are. 
Definitely should have added solder to the uh, anchors. So that the port doesn't go anywhere. Almost there. No, nope, not having any luck. Uh, the proper way to solder one of these things is with a uh, temperature controlled oven. But the problem with that is that a lot of these parts are only rated for, you know, like one or two reflow cycles. And most of them have already hit that. As in the parts on the SP itself already, like the buttons, cart slot, switches, ports. That sort of shit. So running it through the reflow oven is not the best idea. That does not look very soldered down. But maybe it is and maybe I'm just a hater. You know, I think I might have a better time with a different tip. How about we try? Oh. oh, that's not it either. Try this one, because that's what I have handy. Oh, my laptop. Oh, yeah, I gotta heat up. And by the time I figure out I can't do it with this and give up on that, the other iron should be cool enough for me to swap the tip. Oh, instant improvement. a small blob of solder that I'm just working along all of the pins, or trying to at least. I got stuck right there. My problem is I put the port a little bit too far back, so I don't, I can't just hit the pins, or I can't just hit the pads to get the pins. Come on. Hmm. I suppose I'll be back at this point. Rather than watching me sit here struggle with this for another 20 minutes, let me just get that cleaned up and then I'll be right back. Huh? Huh? Huh?
Took me a while, but I got there in the end. Let's see if there's any improvement whatsoever, or if I was chasing a bad lead. Oh, I made it worse. Now we have nothing. <laughs> I bet that's a bottom connect. Connect or. Now. Whoopsie doodle. These are traditionally bottom. Con yeah, this is a bottom connect connector. So that whole endeavor was pretty much useless. Um, but that means we can plug an AGB cable directly into it. As long. as I get it lined up properly. Eh, but still nothing. Or wait, was that on? No. That's a shame. But it is what it is. Maybe next time I'll order the correct parts. One more time, just in case. The 32 pin AGB and 34 pin AGS connector are the exact same pinout for pins 1 through 32. The only exception is um, that AGB is reverse pinout, which means you need a bottom connect on here, but that's what this is, and that's the wrong connector. I also have thirty-two pin. Looks like twelve pin, four pin, and forty pin. Yeah, so I have the wrong connectors. Ah, oh, after all that, what a waste! What a waste! Well, until next time. At least I got some practice in. <laughs>